Nick Denbor joins me right here in Studio Q. Welcome. Hey, Chad. How you doing? I'm well. Uh, congratulations. Thank you so much. You got back from Sundance on Wednesday. How did the audience react there? It was pretty awesome. We've uh, we've had quite a festival festival run starting at TIFF, and every audience has been you know pretty solid laughter. But Sundance was no exception. It was uh, it was a lot of fun. You worked on this project with your friend Davey yeah. for months. Yeah, it was you, about two and a half months. You can tell it, it yeah. took a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, we put some hours into it, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, now, when your friends would ask you what you guys are up to, how did you explain to them what you were doing? You know, we've been doing this kind of stuff for quite a while. I've been doing this kind of augmented remix stuff where I, it's kind of like uh, internet meme extreme photoshopping on video kind of thing. Yeah. And so they're not really surprised. But uh, it's it's also something Davey and I have been talking about for years. I think I met him maybe like six or seven years ago, and I looked him up because his name was on the titles for uh, Tim and Eric Awesome Show. He had done the titles for it, and I'm like, this guy's awesome. i got to get to know him. So we started talking. We were both remixers, and we said, like, let's, we, let's do, like, the ultimate film remix with this kind of style we've been developing. So... Uh, it wasn't until years later now that we both kind of had a couple months off and we thought, let's go for it. And I had an opportunity from uh, working for uh, Conan O'Brien for a couple of years to kind of pitch something to Warner Brothers. So we uh, said, hey, let's take these classic films and see if they'll give us their film library. And The Shining was kind of at the top of the list. We're like, this is this is ultimate, you know. Now, I can, <laughs> I can understand maybe somebody at Warner getting your vision. <laughs> <laughs> but what about, you know, an ordinary pal? How, how did you explain oh, to him what you guys were working on? Um, just like, hey, we're taking The Shining and we're doing the... <laughs> doing the treatment, the regular thing. Because, I, I mean, we made a lot of, like, weird web remixes. And, uh, you know, like any short film, talking to people at all these filmmakers, you kind of, you're doing it on no budget, and you're kind of asking all your friends for favors to jump in and, like, act in it or whatever else. So all the all the actors in it pretty much are friends, and everyone was kind of involved. So everyone kind of knew what was going down, and we're, yeah, we're going to take this shining and make it into a comedy. So <laughs> Okay, walk us through the plot. The plot, okay, so um, Jack takes this job as he does in the original Shining at this new place. But instead of uh, the Overlook Hotel, it's uh, Char Bay's Chicken World, which is the world's largest fast food resort. And uh, <laughs> it's we've actually altered the architecture in the, in the film so that it's got these chicken Ferris wheels and all this crazy stuff. So he, he takes this job and um, he tries this exper- experimental barbecue sauce that they're working on, and he slowly becomes more and more like a chicken and he turns into a chicken <laughs> and uh that's kind of the gist of it right and, there, I understand but. you have a very personal connection to chicken I do actually I, I grew up on a chicken farm in Ontario in Clinton Ontario and then uh years later my uh father started a butcher shop called the poultry place where I worked until I was about 17 so I've uh butchered and made a lot of chicken burgers and things like that in my life I've eaten about 20 times more chicken than the average person so I'm, I'm kind of turning into a chicken myself so this is a very personal <laughs> film for you it's uh, very personal yeah and your parents chicken expertise actually came in handy it in the did. making of this film it did my parents have a credit in the film as the chicken wranglers I went to their uh, farm there they well they've got kind of a hobby farm with a uh, chicken coop and we took their chickens I brought my green screen and my lights and uh, we set it up and it saved, a, saved some money on the union rate for, for chicken wranglers. Exactly, exactly. That's yeah. nice. <laughs> uh, there are a lot of memorable shots packed into these five minutes. It, it is visually very impressive. Uh, one is how you recreate the twin girls calling to Dan, Danny in the hotel hallway. Tell us about <laughs> shooting that scene. Well, that was actually a lot of fun. I, uh, <laughs> if, you, if you watch it online, there, the two girls are actually dancing in the hallway. It's kind of like a, a dance club scene or something like that. And uh, so I shot my own body on green screen. Uh, which uh, I'm a professional dancer, if you didn't know that already. But uh, And then I mapped the girls' dresses onto my body so that I would be kind of dancing around. And uh, then there was a shot when Danny looks up and there's no more girls, like he, like he's imagining it. And there's uh, it's an empty shot of the hallway. So I took that shot of the hallway and projection mapped it onto a, a 3D model that I made of the hallway so that I could actually put a virtual camera in there and make it move around. So I kind of recreated that set virtually wow. and then uh yeah and then made that scene so it was a really interesting kind of challenge and it worked out really well i think it's kind of the highlight for me anyway uh of the of the whole clip it's my favorite clip of the 
of a film. How did you start developing these these techniques and this expertise in making this sort of these uh, sorts of films? Yeah, I started out doing uh, just kind of weird remixes on YouTube and whatnot, and then after a few years of doing that, I actually just got a random email from the guys at Team Coco from Conan O'Brien's show, and they just asked me to, you know, start pitching on the show. So I, I worked for them for about two and a half years, and that kind of really got my pencil sharp on this kind of style because mm -hmm. it's like every day you're making a new video or at least pitching one, and you're just grinding at it. So it was kind of doing that. And every year I would do like a super cut of like the entire season of Conan in one video that's like five minutes long. So it was like really intense kind of project. And I'd say it's kind of a similar style to this, but... Uh, Mainly self-taught or did you go to school to learn yeah. these editing techniques? Well, I, I kind of dropped out of school because I, I went to school into OCAD back in 99 when there was still that kind of transition to digital. And I kind of already had a, a computer that could barely do video and I had, you know, a, an old camera of my dad's and... I got to school and we're like still using VHS and I'm like, what's this all about? <laughs> so, <laughs> so you had I, better equipment in the school. Kind of. Well, I wasn't allowed access to the equipment at the school until, mm. unless I went there for another year and a half. So I kind of, you know, I, I kind of dropped out, started doing construction and then I, I started managing a band and making a lot of band videos and it just kind of came from there. Such an interesting era, mm -hmm. self self taught skills and yeah, in yeah. Terms well, of video, those YouTube video. tutorials can kind of teach you everything these days. There's so many people kind of helping each other learn. It's a really amazing thing online. You talked about doing the, the festival circuit. The, the film has been uh, up online for just a few days. Has over half a million views. Yeah, three already. quarters. I just saw. Yeah, yeah I mean the the views go up super fast, it's right? Insane, when yeah. it's a viral hit like that. What do you think appeals to people so much about this film? I think. I, you know, I, I do think it's kind of a new looking thing, this remix. Like, there's lots of, like, other remixes and, and Shining remixes even that, that are, you know, people took it, the Shining and edited it into, a, like, a rom, or not a rom-com, a, a comedy trailer or something like that. But we've kind of gone that extra mile and put, like you said, a lot of work into it. And it's that real visually striking kind of augmented reality thing going on with it. And it's, uh, I think it's just kind of fresh and people really dig it so and it's also the, just the juxtaposition of taking a, the, a horror and making this whacked out comedy that kind of doesn't make any sense it's kind of uh, people almost don't know how to watch it they're like I don't all the comments online are like you know pretty flabbergasted so. you mentioned that there are other remixes of The Shining yeah what is it about The Shining that invites this sort of treatment I don't know it's just so iconic it's just one of the biggest films ever made it's uh, it's just got these uh, beautiful shots. Uh, the performances are amazing. I don't know. It's just it's just one of those films like that's just so ingrained into so many generations of all of us. That I think it just really strikes a chord. And visually, there there are some nods to the to the director Stanley Kubrick. Yeah. What do you think he would think about uh, uh, I the think chickening? I I like to think that he would like it, but um, yeah, we there are some nods. I mean, his films are pretty loaded with all kinds of imagery and little Easter eggs. I don't know if you've seen the room. 237 and it kind of goes into that about all these you know, conspiracies and whatnot but we kind of wanted to play on that and and do the same and load this thing so you watch it several times and you keep seeing more and more things just like like Kubrick's films um, but uh, yeah I guess you know there's no real way of knowing but you can only hope <laughs> what's next for you Nick well, we've uh, uh, this. The chickening was actually like a pitch to Warner Brothers to be like, "Hey, give us your classic film so we can make kind of an episodic thing where each one is a different film remix." So we're really pushing with that. I'm going to LA next week, and I've got meetings with all kinds of production companies and studios to see if we can kind of unlock these uh, properties and keep going and get the full 22 minutes of the chickening. <laughs> we'll see. I hope we can see it. Thank you, Nick. Thank you so much, Chad.